Uh, in our first segment this morning, the call for peace and national cohesion is getting higher as June 24th multi-tier election draws closer. It is no secret that during elections, tensions normally rise as a result of campaign messages that politicians might use. Former British High Commissioner to Sierra Leone during the war, uh, Komrabai Peter Penfold, recently wrote a piece where he urged Sierra Leoneans to maintain peace and national cohesion. Now, you could uh, recall that um, Peter was very instrumental in ensuring that Sierra Leone has peace in the 90s. Well, this morning, to talk on peace and national cohesion ahead of the elections, we have Komrabai Peter Penfold, uh, former British High Commissioner to Sierra Leone, and Ambassador Suli Darami, Chief Executive Officer, Ahmad Tijan Kaba Foundation for Peace and Democracy. Gentlemen, good morning and thanks for joining us in the studio. Good morning. It's good, good to be back in the AYV studios. And thank you for reuniting me with my good friend Ambassador Darami. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go over to Kamra Bai. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here again this morning. You know, I read in one of the interviews you had, it stated that Penfold, a career diplomat, had a course in his short stay in Sierra Leone and developed a strong liking for Sierra Leone. So that liking you have for Sierra Leone and together, you know, with the justice system and how far we have gone as a nation in terms of peace and tolerance, have we gone a long way? I think we've certainly gone a long way, and I'd like to feel, uh, I'd say, it was stronger than liking for Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is inside my heart. I feel as much at home in Sierra Leone as I do back, back in Britain. I come out two or three times a year. Um, I get around the country a great deal. I always make sure I travel outside of Freetown because I feel that if you really want to understand the country, you can't just sit in Freetown all the time. Um, and it's because I think we, I was here and shared with people like my good friend Ambassador Army and, and others the very difficult times we went through, and they were very difficult times. Um, I feel I share the commitment that we have to make sure that we don't go back to those bad times. It's, it's, it's sad to say that I meet with many young people in this country who don't have any idea of what, how bad those situation was at that time. Um, where we were all living in fear of our lives. Yeah. Um, and as I said, in a curious way, the rebel war brought the country together. It was very democratic from that point of view. I mean, everybody suffered with the loss of a loved one, a limb, a home, or a job. But we demonstrated then, particularly under the leadership of President Kaba, that by uniting and coming together, we could overcome these things. Um, and it showed that nothing, by uniting together and coming together, nothing is beyond the capacity of Sierra Leone people. You know, let's President Kaba was known for his steps to look back at what happened and to correct most of the wrongdoings. And one of the significance of all of those is the TRC report. Are you satisfied with, you know, some of the recommendations that we are made? Have we gone a long way, <coughs> excuse me, in that direction as well? Um, I was always a great supporter of the TRC. I think it did a very good and valuable job. Um, I had less of a good impression about the special court at the time, but the TRC took a lot of time. It went around and met a lot of people. Um, the only thing I felt at that time, and continue to feel to a certain extent, that perhaps we focused too much attention on the combatants taking part in the world war and not enough on the victims. Um, the, the victims really did not get a great deal of assistance, particularly from what the international community was doing. Um, and it was very important to me to show that we'd overcome the rebel war, that there was a peace dividend for the victims as well as much as, as for the combatants. Um, but other than that, the TRC, I think, has helped um, to bring us together. And we've now, you know, since that time, since President Kaba came back and formed the government, as Ambassador Army said, bringing in people of all different persuasions and so on. Um, I mean, you, you know, it's very ironic that this is the country in which I maintain it sets the example to the world on how, how Muslims and Christians can live together in harmony. It sets an example on how racism has hardly any sort of part to play, even though we have a history of slavery. So how ironic it should be that po party political differences have the ability to undo that good harmony. 
And that's why I think it is so important that we do everything we can to ensure that the elections, particularly these next elections, are violent free. Uh, an over 20 year old um, uh, um, article republished on The Guardian says um, former British High Commissioner Peter Penfold in Freetown asks whether Sierra Leone's Truth and Reconciliation Tribunals could endanger peace in a deeply damaged nation. Fast forward to where we are today. What would be the answer to that question that you asked over 20 years ago? Uh, well, first of all, I'd have to rack my brains for 20 <laughs> years ago when you get as old as me. Um, and I can't quite recall the quote, but, but I do recall, I thought I was mo saying it more in, in the direction of the special court rather than the TRC. I was very concerned about when the indictments were being issued by the special court that they had the ability to undermine the peace that we were achieving at that time. Um, as regards the TRC, it had to be handled very carefully. We were going into grounds which were very hurtful for, for the people at that time. Um, we were asking the actual combatants themselves to go and face the actual people that they had caused suffering for um, and ask for their forgiveness. This was asking a great deal of people. I come back to the point, we did, and they achieved it. I mean, this is, many people outside would have said, oh, no, this is far too dangerous to do this. You can't expect the person who chopped somebody's arm off to go and say to them, oh, I'm sorry now, and think that they will be forgiven. But in the, this is the way that Sierra Leoneans have demonstrated their ability and resilience to overcome all these sort of problems. Okay. You, you were in, 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 in Sierra Leone, obviously, during that time and um, followed through on, on it. Y you must have been familiar with the document, the um, Truth and Reco um, the TRC report. So far, what areas are you surprised at as far as the recommendations go in the areas where we chose to follow the, the, the recommendations as a country and some of those recommendations that till date we have not followed through on? Um, again, I'd have to rack my brains on the, all, the, all the actual details of the TRC. Um, but as I said earlier, I think one of my main concerns was to ensure that as well as preaching reconciliation and peace between all the combatants, between all those who suffered, um, to try to ensure that the victims would get a peace dividend. Um, I remember being struck by one example at the time of a carpenter in one of the small villages um, and the rebels had come to that village and they'd destroyed his carpentry shop, they chopped off his hands um, and then months later the rebel who had actually caused that came to the village to apologise carrying with him a set of carpentry tools mm. which he had been given as part of the reconciliation process. And that to me seemed to be an example of how, you know, we were not focusing enough on the victims as opposed to the combatants. It was a difficult choice to make. It was a difficult choice for the international community. It was a difficult choice for President Kaba and his government. Um, I remember talking to President Kaba at the time. I would go and see him and say, so your Excellency, what are your priorities? And he would say, High Commissioner, everything is a priority at the moment. And that was the state of the country that we were in. But coming back to your earlier point, look how far we have come. Look how far we've come since those days there. And that's why, let's not slide back, because the worst thing that could happen now is that we undermine all those sacrifices that were made by people to achieve the peace, undermine all the good work that we've done to achieve democracy. Pe people outside look at Sierra Leone with awe and re great respect for what the country has done. So let's not start getting divided again in a violent way. P party politics is very healthy. I mean, it's very good to have a responsible government. They are supposed to, when they get voted in, act on behalf of all the people in the country, not just those who voted mm. for them. Equally, the opposition party should be vibrant and hold that government to account for things that they think they're not doing right, not just represent or have a different view. Um, that's how we have a healthy democracy, 
We have an unhealthy democracy when it turns to violence. And, and You're obviously no stranger to Sierra Leone. You're <laughs> frequent here. But this time around, what's the, the mission of your, your, your um, visit? Um, as usual, I, I have two charities very close to my heart. I set up a charity for initially the blind school here in Freetown, which now covers all the blind schools of Sierra Leone. <coughs> and then also, I'm patron of a charity called the Dorothy Springer Trust, okay. which is teaching employment skills for the disabled. And I always maintain the best way to help the disabled, who of course feature very prominently in this country, is don't not just give them charity, help them get a job, let them have their own respect and integrity and have, bring up their own family. Um, I've also had a really interesting trip this time. Um, I met um, a very um, Edu important educator from the United States, a Sierra Leonean. He's called Francis Mukasa. He comes from a little village called Mandina in Moyamba district. And he has come back to give his contribution to the country by setting up a school in Mandina. Um, and uh, I had the privilege of going down and seeing that school while I was there, and I was very impressed with it. Um, while I was there, Mandina is not far away from Gabangatok, which I've always wanted to visit because it's the birthplace of Milton Magai. I never had the opportunity to do it as I was High Commissioner because of tr the troubles. I never had an opportunity since then. I have to be honest with you, I was very disappointed with that visit because if you go there, you would never ever know that this was the birthplace of the founding father of Sierra Leone. As you enter the town, there's no sign saying, welcome to the birthplace of the founding father of Sierra Leone, Sir Milton Magai. I've tried to find his house. His house has fallen down. Um, and I, I thought, this is a shame. I mean, this, is a, this was a great man, a great part of our history. Um, and we should have more, show more respect for the people who have made much major contributions. I mean, what Ambassador Durami and his colleagues are doing for President Kaba is absolutely right. We have to respect his memory and his legacy. Um, but think of the other people who have made a major contribution. Um, and and particularly, say, visitors who come here. Um, it's also the birthplace, of course, of the second Prime Minister, Albert Nargai. I know we have statues here in Freetown, but in his actual birthplace, um, I had expected more, quite frankly. And I think if you can't show respect for these sort of people, how are you going to show respect for your country as a whole? And this is a very important message to get across to our young people. Our young people need positive role models. Um, and who better than to follow the examples of President mm -hmm. Tijan Kaba, Prime Minister Milton Magai? It, it, part of the um, pillars that um, strengthen the uh, sustenance of peace uh, could be um, human rights, uh, access to justice, generally democracy and good governance. What's your fair assessment of these in Sierra Leone from where we were in the 90s to where we currently are as a country? I think you rightly mentioned things such as the judiciary and so on. Um, they're all vital ingredients in, in democracy. Democracy is far more than just having elections every four years and people voting in a ballot box. A democracy needs all of its institutions working properly together in its respective roles. So that's as well as the government and the active opposition, it is also the judiciary being free and fair and accessible for all people. A public service is serving the public. Um, the law and order being maintained by the police in a, in a democratic society. It is the police who have the main role in law and order. Um, the army has a role to play in, in defending its borders and so on. And then there's a role very much so for independent media like yourselves. Um, I mean, I, one of the things I, I do feel that, which is important, is that this whole question of having a non-violent election is far too important to be just left to the politicians. We, all, we are all stakeholders in what, how it affects the future of this country. And this will include the term that I'm still getting to grips to as an old man, but influencers. Everybody is now an influencer, I see. Um, <laughs> and they have a very important role to play. And amongst the influencers, um, I would also include my fellow chiefs. Um, I'm very proud to have been made a Paramount Chief here. And the Paramount Chiefs, as well as being 
just the custodians of the traditions and culture of the country, they have a responsibility, particularly at this time, to maintain a peaceful environment in which development can occur in their chiefdoms. So, and they also, from my point of view, are an integral part of Sierra Leone's democracy. Our democracy in this country is not, does not follow the Westminster recipe or the, or the Washington mm -hmm. recipe. We're creating Sierra Leone's mm -hmm. recipe, its own particular brand of democracy. And things such as the chieftaincy system have a very important part to play. When all those institutions are working together, then they can be also focused particularly on human rights. And when it comes to human rights, we then look to our NGOs. There are some very healthy NGOs in this country. Um, they are the ones who can help hold to account all the various institutions um, to ensure that our human rights are respected. Not least, as Ambassador de Army has emphasized, the role of women in this country. Um, we, they still have m much to, to catch up, although things such as the 50-50 group have done, made great strides. Um, I'm pleased to see that we now have lady paramount chiefs um, in the south. We don't have any lady paramount chiefs in the north yet, so there's, that's another further development we need to achieve. Um, but what we do need, every woman, every person, needs to be brought up in a society in which both their human rights are respected and their opportunities are there for all of them in a peaceful environment, no matter from where they come or from what political persuasion they are. Uh, with the, according to the TRC um, um, report, one of the things that led us to the war were um, some fractions of the public felt they were disenfranchised from getting their views heard. And now, fast forward to where we are, we live in a society where the plurality of opinions are now not just tailored through the traditional mainstream media, but they're also now frivolously shared on the social media, which does not have professionals there to regulate and control what threatens national security or not. And that in itself has come back to create a problem for us in, in Sierra Leone. You make such a very important point there, and it's a point that particularly concerns me. It's a point that I've seen grow in recent times. Um, it's not unique, of course, to, to Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and we've seen all around the world um, what can happen with social media when it's uncorroborated, the information they put out. I mean, look what happened to, in the United States not so long ago, and all that was fueled by um, um, social media platforms and and it can be the same here we've had examples of social media causing disruptions here or just while I've been here mm -hmm. for example um, in, involving the the Lebanese community um, and what happened in Lebanon with some Sierra Leoneans being killed there mm -hmm. so this is a very valid point you make um, and but it's particularly difficult to know how to um, control this I mean, every country around the world is having problems controlling the, the social media. Uh, so we have to find ways. The best that I, uh, advice I can offer is to try and instill in people a respect and a tolerance for other people's points of view. Yes, let them have their other points of view, but you don't then have to be sort of enemies and take <laughs> to the streets or, or advocate violent means to, to get their points across. Um. Still on the aspect of peace, um, Komrabai, Alusain Kamara is asking that um, we ask you about your perception on the Yenga situation, uh, which he terms a foreign invasion. And Joe B. Bangali Jr. Is, ask, is saying, please ask Peter Penfold what he thinks about Sierra Leone police force for good at that time, compared to the past 13 to 14 years. We need the Met Police to go back and work uh, with our police and teach them the morals and integrity? Um, well, I'm not going to say too much about the Yenga situation, um, except to say that obviously I think all of us want to see a peaceful negotiated s solution to that problem. Um, but that's certainly not for me to, uh, to get involved one way or the other. That's for the respective governments to, to handle that. And I'm sure from what I've seen and heard and read, they are too keen also to solve that problem quite peacefully for the benefit of all. Um, 
But um, I just want to pick up the point about impartiality and, and biasness that was also asked. Um, I think it's, it, it, sometimes there's a very thin dividing line between impartiality and bias. Um, interestingly enough, you know, when I was High Commissioner, I was talking to Ambassador Durami earlier, how many people <coughs> come up to me and talk very in praiseworthy terms about your president, High mm -hmm. Commissioner. In other words, President <laughs> Tijan Kaba. Well, he was my president in that I was the High Commissioner. Um, but as I said at the time, the position that the international community took, and particularly the British government took, was that we were fighting for the restoration of the legitimate democratically elected government of this country. If it had been another president or another party, we would have maintained that same position. The personal relationship I had with President Cabo, of course, was to one side, and I enjoyed that very much. Um, so, so you can be impartial um, and not necessarily show sort of any, any bias towards that. Um, and that's what I think sometimes people have, have to learn here as well. And in your closing curtsies, uh, what would be your uh, probably message or word of caution to Sierra Leoneans as we head to election in June? Um, I, I think very much as I've said all along is that please let's not go back and undermine all the sacrifices that many, many people made in this country. Um, um, the um, fighting for the restoration of peace and fighting for democracy. Um, as we have can see, it can be very easily done. Um, we mentioned earlier, for example, um, one of the moves being made at the moment to try and stop street demonstrations mm -hmm. um, because they have the potential to turn violent. So, so all of us have a role to play in identifying where potentially things may become violent and try to ensure that that, that doesn't come about. Um, if we have non-violent elections, um, then we can only benefit all of us from, from what will flow from there. Um, and I very much hope that will be the case. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking your time to talk to us this morning. Um, Komwabai, that's a beautiful name. I, I hope you, you go along with it. Oh, very much so. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. In fact, um, yeah, I think you're aware I do have a Sierra Leone passport. Oh, and on my passport, it is Komwabai Peter Penfold. And it's always very amusing when I show that passport to the people at the airport in U UK, when they say, where's your visa for Sierra Leone? And I say, no, way it is. They say, but this is a different name. <laughs> and I point out... And that you know, name is a title. It's, 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 it's I, a I title. I, I point out. I said, no, this is a title. I say, it's like if I was in Britain, it would be Lord Peter Penfold. <laughs> and they immediately say, oh, I'm very sorry, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us this morning.